What was that noise? What noise? It sounded like a cat. I think it was just a squeak from my mic. Boom. Oh, gotcha. Oh, my video is not on. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. What is what, that? What is it? Are you dressed like me? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> I dress like you. <laughs> You and Ken, I mean, you guys wear these cool necklaces, and like, you're not the only men that can wear necklaces. I can wear a necklace. I totally a neck, pull off a necklace. Well, it's funny because you're calling it a neck necklace, and me and Ken would call it a chain. <laughs> Is that not what they're so called? You, you're already. It's not a necklace. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, really? Fun. That that looks like a Cuban link too. You oh really? really uh... Maybe it is from Cuba. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna wear it to Miami. Just see if anybody <laughs> says anything. Just like see, like, would people just think, "Oh, this is how Adam dresses when he's like in person." <laughs> it looks a little off on you. I can't tell what it is. Like something, maybe uh, it's just it's just so out of, a little, out of character. A little I don't know. Off? But like, I, you why? Know this is a joke, right? You know, I'm not actually gonna wear. I know a it's necklace. a joke, but I'm like, why does it look so funny? <laughs> That's what I want to know. Because like, I thought about how when I put, I, so I bought this just for this, just to gag you, uh, just to prank you. Uh, but I thought about like. It's going to look so weird on me. I put it on. It does look so weird on me. And I thought, like, it doesn't look weird on Dax or Ken. Why? What is well, it I'm about assuming, me? It, did you go? Is that, like, a real chain? I don't know. I got it on Amazon. I mean, it's... I don't think it's, it's real gold. I think it's Okay, fake. I was going to say, because look how, like... Because look how, like, yellow it looks. Oh, it looks yeah. like what, okay. a cartoon <laughs> concept of gold. <laughs> and mine's, like, you know, like... A little dull. <laughs> okay, so if mine were duller, would I look normal in a? Oh, do I gotta tuck I it in know. the shirt? I gotta tuck it in the shirt. Well, it depends. That's like the sometimes I, sometimes I tuck it in, sometimes I don't. Well, oh. now we can't see it at all. Now when... you can't even see it. Yeah, <laughs> just a little subtle, like a little, a little that. Is that nice? That's funny. Yeah. No, I mean. Okay, I'm taking it off. It's I think weird. we should start trying it. Trying to get like I'm a real not, one. I'm and... not, no, I'm not. Actually it's so funny. It's it would be so <laughs> funny. <laughs> I'm gonna send this back. Amazon returns are too easy. Yeah. What's What's funny is, uh, so I've worn one for a while, but it's because it's like something my mom got me. It's not like oh, uh, nice. It's like it's sentimental like, value. Yeah, it wasn't like I'm. So, I was initially it wasn't like oh I'm someone that wants to go get a chain, but then uh, Liz's dad. So the one I'm wearing now is Liz's dad's. Hmm. Um, because he had one that was like super old and he gave it to me and it looked really bad because it was old but oh. then we took it to the place and they polished it and then it looks like amazing now uh yeah. and it's like it worth like a new. good amount of money so it was like a nice nice thing that's awesome yeah. i uh yeah I, I don't know why it looks so weird on me and it doesn't look weird on you i really <laughs> i'm not making fun of you it looks totally normal if this when, is what it would be like if i got a tattoo it would no, look totally wrong well Maybe. Yeah, it is crazy how people's like personality can kind of affect their appearance, but mm -hmm. uh, so like some things just don't match. But I, I don't know. When you're in Miami, you, you can put this one on, and we'll see if it looks weird still. Okay. Yeah, we'll see if anyone notices that you're not wearing one, and that I am wearing one. <laughs> I was gonna come up to be being like, "Wait, did you lose your chain?" <laughs> Adam's borrowing it. Yeah. <laughs> For an experiment. I'm sick, by the way. I don't know if that was clear. Yeah, no, I could tell. Um, my, my nose is a little stuffy, but I don't think I'm sick. Interesting. I um, slept terrible. Do you track your sleep? Have we talked I mean, about I this like I haven't ate sleep, so it's like I can't not track my sleep, you know? Do you know like what a sleep score is? Yeah, my sleep score okay. is always amazing every single day. Really? Like yeah. how amazing? Like 90s. Really? You're like Casey. I get... Like 80s are good for me. Most days are in the 70s. And this morning was like 47. I slept I like three hours. I couldn't sleep because of how sick and stuffy. So like I'm not gonna get better because I'm not sleeping, you know? You're checking your score. Uh okay, 85 today. But I, I went to sleep uncharacteristically late today. But what the why'd you go to sleep so late? You mean last night? I was actually working. I was super into into Ooh. work uh you know that thing that i always say where if you just change up your workflow you get a productivity boost even if yeah the workflow's no better so that kind of yeah. happened to me yesterday uh because do you remember i was asking a while ago like 
hey has anyone made a better front end for github issues because i'd love to like actually yes. use github issues for ssd stuff and it's just so slow when you're managing this stuff day to day mm -hmm. uh and i know and i know there was an app that like synced the issues to linear and it would be bi-directional so changes you made in linear would reflect back and i used yeah. that a while ago but it was like a little off um but then i remembered oh linear actually released a native version of this so they ah. have this thing where you can connect your github and it syncs everything into linear also like it just like kills me how good they are at stuff like you connect <laughs> it like a normal kind of github thing then they have this migration assistant flow to like import your existing issues and they just like thought of like every little detail it's like they knew ah. that okay sometimes some of the users in the github issues are going to be people on your team so let's help you map them like just every little detail was just flawlessly executed and just like damn um even the places where like like that's less about like speed and performance and that's more about just like really yeah, good ux getting the details he, right yeah yeah so even there they did a great job so then you sync it over and it's perfect like uh everything works like everything synced by directionally uh they have like a native like a different comments ui pops up so that when users are commenting on github they like still show up inside a linear ticket as though it's like a native comment and everything yeah. and it all just works and it's obviously fast and super performant like linear so now they just fix GitHub issues. Like you just don't have to use GitHub issues at all if you're maintaining yeah. a project and it all just works. And I have to like go look at the GitHub issue screen again. Is so it, was, that, that like really excited me. So I was like just burning down a bunch of issues. Is there actually yeah. an issue or a, sorry, that was going to be stupid. Is there actually <laughs> a problem with GitHub issues or is it just GitHub notifications? Cause that's the thing I hate about GitHub is notifications are meaningless. There's just so many of them. If you do anything at all on GitHub, you just get overwhelmed and then you don't look at them anymore because they're pointless. Yeah, That's I think I, I think notifications are a much much more broad problem because if you, even if you just create an issue, you like might miss the fact that someone replied and everything because notifications are bad. Yeah. Um, I don't really like when you're actually working on like when you're someone that's working across a bunch of issues, your workflow isn't really notification driven. It's just like you want a view where you see all the most recently updated issues in that order and you just go yeah. through them. Yep. So that's what I get in linear. And then obviously linear has notifications as well. And, and that also just works. Um, so yeah, it's funny. Cause like a few weeks ago, I was like, man, someone should just build this. Someone should just build like a better file yeah. for GitHub issues. But linear then it was just it. like, yeah, it's like a, their scope is broader that they like also solved this problem as like a subset of whatever they're doing. That's awesome. Um, that's an interesting, uh, startup product thing. I hate the term product market fit. It just sounds, it, every time, the people who say it just bother me. Uh, yeah. I know it means something, but it just bothers me, the people who talk about product market fit. But I guess like from a startup strategy perspective to make a broad thing and then be like, oh, you know what? A lot of developers are using this. Let's make like a thing that makes it really good for developers. Is that a strategy that other people, like, have you heard of this? Do people do this? Is this well, this happens all the time where uh, like someone with a better... Like there'll be like a bunch of people trying to like solve a problem. Then someone with like a better angle on it solves mm. many problems and also that problem and like kills you. Yeah. So that's usually like, if you look at SSC ion, like we we're always thinking from that perspective of what would, what could come out that could make SST like irrelevant. Yeah. And we realize like the moment someone does something like what we're doing, but not pin to AWS, or is irrelevant because like their thing can do our stuff and other stuff. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you kind of have to always like watch out for that. The other thing I was a little bit interested in then with this is, uh, yeah, this thing where like you build a front end, a better front end for an existing like big product that usually doesn't work out. But in Linear's case, they're like, they're, they're obviously big on their own. So it's a little bit different, but this thing I just described with GitHub, they're doing with everything. They're doing it with like Asana, with Jira, with, with all the existing software. So you mm -hmm. can literally be on a team that's like, we've been using Jira for 10 years and you're like, I fucking hate this. You personally can go create a linear account and just use linear and the rest of your team wouldn't ah, even know. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot really of people clever. hate those tools yeah. like Jira and rally and whatever. Yeah. And like, you're never going to convince certain teams to put in the effort right. to switch. Or <laughs> I was on a team that went through like four of them oh, and right. ended up back on rally. It was like 
started one place and then ended up back on it like eight years later. It's like they can't, they just can't decide. Like every PM or person, every top stakeholder decides something different. And then there's like a six month migration and then they're on it for a year. That whole thing. <laughs> it's fine with a lot of these tools. Like the unset thing is, is the tools not the problem? It's like, you're yeah. the problem. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's hard to use, it's hard to be organized and like yeah. have a good process. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, that uh, that it just makes you think about organization size. Man, my brain is slow today. I mean, it's always pretty slow, but just heads up, it's gonna be rough. Like, <laughs> you're gonna try to have a normal conversation with me, and I'm just gonna be like, Duh. uh, I like I, normal I then. <laughs> Ouch. Uh, yeah, just organization size. Like, I feel like sometimes I I talk about the small team thing. I know you talk about the small team thing a lot. Uh, like the future belongs to these tiny teams that can do more and more all the time, more leverage per person. So you, you have these small teams doing big, big things. Uh, but then there is like the other side where you need the big, big companies. Like Amazon has to exist because you can't do what Amazon does with AWS with a small team. Lots of mm -hmm. those cases where there's big companies that need to exist. I feel like in the middle is where you're in trouble. Yeah. Like if you're like 200 engineering team, I don't know. I just, good luck. Like, I feel like a team of five is going to come in under you and do what you're doing, but better and more efficiently. Or like, you're just never going to compete with the big company, right? Is there like any theory around this? Why do I keep searching for validation? I keep looking for like, has anyone written a book about this? Could you tell me what it's called, Dax? I don't just, well, it, you just well, talk about it. It's funny you bring this up because I've, I've been thinking a lot about this over the last couple of days as well. Um, but before we get into that, there actually is a theory of what you're talking about, but Again, much more broad, but it actually applies to this. Mm -hmm. um, just in general, middle zones in approaches tend to be really bad. And there's like mm. lots of cases like this. Like it's very, it's good to like go to extremes. Yeah. Um, like, but if, like if you're doing uh, a little heroin, that's okay. A lot of heroin, also okay. But like <laughs> middle zone heroin, not so good. You need to go all in or, or just dabble. Yeah, otherwise, what's the point? Um, but I think we've talked about this a little bit before, like Taleb's, a lot of Taleb's work is built on this idea, this barbell strategy idea is what he calls it. Um, oh, right. I've heard just of the this. two weights at the end, nothing yep. in the middle. Um, but yeah, it's funny cause I had this weird feeling where of course me, you, a bunch of people harp on this small teams are important and good and can do a lot. It's a thing that's in the air, like, oh yeah, like a lot of times small teams outship bigger teams. So we do talk about it a lot, but at the same time, I feel like we don't talk about it enough and it should be driving people insane because <laughs> there are so many examples that we just take for granted and don't look at where a small team is acts is like demolishing a bigger team, like destroying a bigger team. Yeah. And we're just like, oh yeah, that sometimes happens. But then when you think about it, like what the hell, like that is crazy <laughs> that like someone's spending millions of dollars and having no impact. And we're just like, okay with this. Like, yeah, <laughs> I was joking the other day where I'm like, people should be like committing suicide when they find this out, when they find out that like a small team is doing that, like it should <laughs> be that, it should be nearly humor. that serious. <laughs> Your sense of humor is awesome. Like you've never laughed more on the podcast than when you just talked about suicide. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I'm just picturing like, you know, in Japan where the samurais like commit oh, seppuku like, and they're it's like, like a noble thing. Honor. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like I'm just like, honorable. people should be doing that because <laughs> I was, and to, again, to brag a little bit, don't indulge me. Uh, I was looking at, there's like a set of companies that are considered like SST competitors or in the same zone as us. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at their NPM stats from like around the time the SST Came out like they, they all kind of came out at the same time and completely flat charts for all of them like barely any growth like insanely small to the point where i'm just like how are they motivated to like get up in the morning and keep working on this like it's just not working yeah and you look up all these companies and they're like so much bigger i mean they're not like huge 200 person companies but you know we're three they might be like 10 some of them are like 30 um, they have like full-time people doing stuff that I spend like 10% of my time doing and wish I could spend more. Yeah. And it's, it's just not working at all. And like, how do people go on every single day? Cause I know if I'm looking at their stats, they're looking at ours for sure. 
And aren't they is just it, like, what the fuck? Is it possible that not every dev tools company looks at those stats? Impossible. I, it seems is impossible. It <laughs> is it possible? Because sometimes I'm surprised by humanity. There's things I'm like, why would anybody ever do that? Why do they have to warn you not to do that? And they're like, well, there's people that would do that. <laughs> right. So is there is there a possibility they're just completely oblivious? And that's not a metric they care about or track or think about. I guess I guess what I'm describing, I am describing people where I'm like, I don't understand how they're operating. So it is possible, but like they gotta at least be looking at their own stats, right? Their own stats are just flat. Just flat. Maybe they just don't know like that's a stat. Years. Maybe they're looking at their website traffic or something. Maybe they're looking at some, <laughs> some stat that's not the right stat. Like, like they're it publishing is a stat. They're publishing NPM packages, but they're not looking at NPM downloads. That's what I'm talking yeah, about. I look maybe. at NPM downloads. Yeah, yeah. maybe. they. I don't know. I guess. Okay. So because I was thinking like I've never looked at NPM stats for anything, uh, but I guess like I don't publish NPM packages. So that makes sense. But so if you're I a guess, business trying to like distribute NPM package, an NPM yeah. package, you would be aware of this stat. So it should be 100% participation in the looking at NPM download stat if you're a DevTools company. Sounds like. I think so. But I guess, yeah, I guess anything is possible. But. <laughs> It's just like, and they're doing all the same things. They're like writing these long blog posts where they 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 write these blog blog posts that are like more detailed than anything I remotely have the attention span to read or write. Like I've never <laughs> put that much effort into producing anything, yeah, uh, like that. And like they do that, and they put in all that effort, and then I look at their chart, and it's just like there's less downloads that week. You know, it's just yeah. So, how do they so, go on? So you look at the stats a lot. Maybe they're just going on the other end of the barbell and just not looking at them at all. <laughs> <laughs> they're, just, they're like, they we're going to work on our middle. business and yeah. we're not going to, we're not going to like observe anything about it. It's we're like, just going to keep like pushing stuff who, out there. Yeah. The people who are like, I'm just going to keep making content. I'm not going to oh, look yeah. at the numbers. <laughs> it's like that, that whole attitude. It's like yeah. the confidence. Yeah. Like, I, I mean, the difference see, is you got to, you know, you need to send your quarterly investor update. So <laughs> mm. <laughs> that's a good you point. can't get away from it so yeah, much. Okay. So then they all have to be looking at those stats. Cause that would definitely be something that an investor in a dev tools company would be like, wait, all my other in dev tool port codes send me. NPM yeah, right. Don't you have NPM packages? <laughs> Let's get some numbers. Yeah. I mean, okay. So like, they're all just depressed. That's the answer. Is there, I, but I don't think they are like how are Cause for me, I like, my motive and my whole and our whole team is like this our motivation our emotions how we feel what we feel like working on it's so driven by looking at those things because it's mm. basically a pulse on whether what we're doing is working yeah um and i can't imagine like the thing that strikes me is if my chart looked like theirs i would have started over with a brand new company like five times over mm. by now like there's yeah. no point in continuing when it's so, that ineffective so i don't i don't think this is specific to dev tools i think this is the broader yeah it's general talking about yeah. the zerp thing the the zero interest rate like i just think there's a there's been an era of startups where it's like you're not really concerned with metrics or how things are going it's like we have runway we have two years of runway like we raised a bunch of money. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, do, do some founders honestly just not even care if it works out? Is it just like, this I was think a ride? So. It's like, I this think was so. Fun. It feels that way. Good time. Raised yeah. some money. Had a, a office space in the Bay Area. I don't know. That's probably... Now I'm getting way too specific. <laughs> I mean, that was a lot of people like eight years ago. But... Had office space in the Bay Area on Market Street on the fourth floor. <laughs> yeah, <sorry. laughs> Who are you talking about? <laughs> I'm thinking about specific founders here. Uh, no, I, there was a, a, an experience with a very large uh, uh, consumer see. website. The founders uh, had an office and they had they told us about their baller water. Now, it's a, and they're not going to hear this. Uh, like that they, they literally had water bottles printed that said baller on them. And they were so proud of it that they told us, just, we just met them. We got in a vehicle <laughs> with them and they're like, yeah, we just got our baller water in. Check this out. And they're like showing us the photos. And that's what I think about most founders in Silicon Valley. That's it's so like, funny. Baller water. Good yeah. job guys. <laughs> <laughs> Cause they just raised like $60 million. So like they oh. had all this cash and they were a couple of. Uh, characters man i'm white i'm such a white guy <laughs> there are a couple of characters, of characters with their ball or water old, what even sure is that a, i'm not sure if that's a white or an old thing i'm both so it could be either yeah uh that's really funny uh man my mind just went blank i was gonna say something uh oh yes so i saw a tweet uh, a couple of days ago i think it was by suhail like the 
Mixpanel founder, then he did Mighty, and now he's working on this AI image thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he was like, "Good looking guy." Forgot. Can I say that? I don't know. Just good looking guy. His little avatar. He's got a good, good, good photo. Okay. Good avatar. You know, he's got a nice appearance to him. I don't know. Like he looks clean. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's a good. He's got a good profile photo. I don't think it's so much his face and his appearance as it is like, "Good job huh. on that photo." Like he oh, got I like see. the right lighting, everything about it. It's like it's really accentuating the good parts of him. I feel like does that make sense? You Maybe should you just randomly tweet probably, that at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just popped in my head, and I just had to say it. It's like that's what I do on the podcast. Is I'm just gonna say what's in my head, and that was in my head. Yeah. So I don't remember exactly what he said or how he phrased it, but it was something along the lines of like. When you're a founder, the stakes are so high because your dream job is at stake. Because like for a lot of founders, I think they love their day to day and it's like the best job ever. And if the company doesn't work out, they lose that job. And I relate to that so much. I was like, I love my job so much that if the company doesn't work out, that's going to be like the biggest loss for me that I can't do the same thing every day anymore. So that is like extremely motivating. So but yeah, I guess you're describing what you're describing also makes sense where I'm like, maybe people don't like, they're not that emotionally attached to it. They're just like, kind of see it more like a normal job. And if it ends, it ends and they move on to the next thing. Or it was just too easy for long enough. Like if you raise $60 million off one meeting and it was pretty easy, maybe you're like, I don't know if it doesn't work out, I'll just do it again. Like, oh yeah. How hard is this? This founder thing piece of cake <laughs> when there was just money everywhere i don't know maybe fundraising just got too easy and so people didn't really realize the opportunity in front of them like how many I, yeah i want to know now like how many founders after their startup fails because we know 95 percent of startups fail or whatever after they fail what is the like breakdown like the gantt chart or whatever that's not a yep. Gantt chart you know what i'm talking about like the bars get smaller yeah, you're you know talking, talking about? about the one with the. <laughs> it's like what a funnel, was... like a funnel chart. Okay, but the reason I'm laughing is because that was an orgy chart that was going around. What? I did, I honestly didn't see it, like on Twitter or something. Yeah, I. It's funny that I'm forgetting the name because everybody was making jokes about this type of chart now. Because recently, okay, the... like this is yeah, it's because the... on accident. This uh, this woman who's like pretty notable, she's like. She's technically a sex worker, I guess, in that field. But she, like, has, like, this autistic level of, like, analysis over everything in that world. So she, like, had a birthday orgy for herself. And she, like, documented in detail, like, the process. And she, like, created one of those funnel charts to see what the outcome of people that, like, applied to be part of it and, like, where they ended up, like all the way yeah. at the end yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like fully in detail so everyone was like joking about that because it was like really insane but that, okay, that's that's well, the chart you're describing only, yeah i only see them in like google search console or whatever uh i'm just looking at website analytics but i'm sure that topical reference well no i'm gonna lean into it yeah that's what i saw I'm, just bring, <laughs> I'm bringing it up because i'm on top of trends uh but you know what i mean like i want to know where yeah. do startup founders end up where do they go after their startup fails do you know yeah a lot of people were talking about this and this kind of happened where and i, I think this is like a huge signal of who you really are a bunch of people that raised money in the last two years or so, like right when, like on the cusp of before everything became a lot harder, yeah. a lot of them returned the money and went back to their jobs in big tech. And to me, that's like impossible for me. Like I would never do that. I would like try a million ideas. So there were $0 in the bank before I like moved off of it. But yeah. there are a lot of people that did that. They like left their PM job at Google, started a company, spent a year's worth of burn the money back and went back to that job so yeah i think it, it, it was like a random yeah i'm just gonna go try this for a little bit type of interesting thing that was available to a lot of people for a while huh yeah i don't know like if i would have done that if i didn't have a co-founder that was good at sticking with stuff <laughs> uh like i don't think i would return the money i think i would just like keep trying but yeah, I do, like I, returning I the money is a the... crazy point because you're like, yeah, that, you still have the weird conversation. option to try more. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Man, I do oh. remember the beginning. You're just taking me back. This probably has nothing to do with it. I'm just now I'm remembering like early days after quitting jobs and not having like it took us a year to fundraise. So we thought it'd take six months. So like 
we liquidated IRAs. I mean, we literally were down to like, cause we had one employee and we were down to like, I don't know if we can pay him and this mm. is going to feel bad. Uh, and then we raised our seed. So it was a happy ending. Uh, but man, there's some stress in the founding thing. And I guess I never really thought about like my pull to stay in this job, but yeah, no, I, I mean, I, we definitely fought really hard to, to keep the company alive because it was like our baby. I think it was more that than it was like, I mean, my job looked pretty similar before it was like, I was on my own anyway. Uh, I don't know where I'm going with this. Just, you just made me think you made me think for the first time today. I've just been taking baths and drinking <laughs> herbal tea. <laughs> The other thing that I read that I think is really interesting advice is, so you were talking about how many of these people made a raise a bunch of money and they were like, that was easy. I can probably just do it again. Uh, someone was like, people should operate more like their NBA players where there's a small window where mm. they're going to make uh -huh. a lot of money, but that's going to go away and they have to yep. like live a whole lifetime and whatever they built. Uh, and I'm like, such that advice good, probably would have been really good, good for a lot of people. Yeah. 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 No, that's, that's perfect. I think like some, I mean, I do stuff with sports, right? Like our startup mm -hmm. is very sports centric. So I think about these salaries and salary caps and all the stuff that goes into it. And, and it's hard if you follow sports, not to think about like, wow, a lot of these guys like 30 and it's like, there's a cliff, especially depending on the position and the sport you play. Like your career is literally 10 years mm -hmm. and that's just such a different life. But then you think about technology and it's like, I don't know how much longer is our window. Yeah. So like, you never know. So you might as well operate that way. Uh, yeah. I have another funny thought where I was like, you know, I think I'm pretty smart and pretty good at my job. And I'm wondering if everyone that's better than me is already retired. And that's why I never hear from them. <laughs> I feel like, <laughs> I feel like if you're like better than me, you're like at the point where you're already like very successful and then you're just yeah. like, you made your money you know, and now you're out. Yeah. And you're out. So that's what yeah. it feels like on Twitter. Doesn't it? Does, does it kind of feel that way to you? Like when I describe it that way, it's like, uh, all, like we're definitely at a level and there's no one like really above us. And then I'm assuming <laughs> the people above us are just like above it all. Cause they're crazy rich. So I, <laughs> I am not you. I don't, uh, one, I don't actually have lots of good things to say. So I feel like on Twitter, you probably do feel like, why is everyone else an idiot? I don't feel that way because I'm also an idiot. Uh, on the barbell, you're on one end and I'm on the other. We'll just say No, that. that's not true. You feel like everyone's an idiot too. Don't lie. I don't feel like everyone's an idiot. But I, sometimes I guess, like, you post things and you get replies and you're like, why are people so okay, stupid? Okay, yeah, like, sometimes. You definitely feel sure, that. Yeah. I've yeah. felt that, yeah. But I, I would also say that my personality is very like deferred to authority. So I always assume there are people above me at all times. No, me too. Things. Okay. I do too. But, but my point is they're not, they're never not around vocal. in our, yeah, in our yeah. circle. So they just cashed <laughs> out and they're like, I'm done here. There was a, who was the founder? Wow. I'm, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, founded like an analytics thing that got sold to Stripe. No, I'm butchering this. Uh, oh, profit. Well, no, is that a company? There's a founder who was kind of like in our community in the like, well, more like the, the like startup indie hacking space, probably mm -hmm. not really our community, uh, but he's like somebody that you bump into on Twitter and sold his company. I want to say it's like Stripe or something like that for like a hundred million. And you kind of saw him tweeting still for a little while, like about what he's doing with his money. And you kind of got to like live vicariously. He's like, that's what that kind of exit would be like. Like, this is the kind of stuff you'd be dealing with and thinking about. But then he did taper off. I don't feel like I see anything from him anymore. I wish I knew yeah. the company or the founder name or who it sold to. I wish I had any detail here. <laughs> this vaguely sounds familiar to me. Uh, Does it? I think so. But yeah, Profit. it's kind of exactly that. I just feel like <laughs> there's no one that's like 10x better than us. That's like in our circle. So yeah. It's like they're retired. Yeah, yeah. They're retired. <laughs> they're done. It was to paddle. Sold it to paddle. I think it was Profit well. I wish I Wait, could remember paddle, his name. like the paddle board like company? the payments oh no, no. oh no okay the what payment. okay There's okay a... no no hang on i gotta describe something to you which is <laughs> which i think is awesome so in miami and maybe in other places there's a company called paddle p-a-d-l uh, -huh. uh and they just go around anywhere there's like a beach or any kind of coastline and they'll just drop 
a bunch of paddle boards there and you can just grab them and use them whenever you want what? and it's just like a subscription that you pay for it's like uh, the scooters kind of same business yeah, model, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah yeah but it's like way more fun and like way more useful and they're everywhere like anytime you see anytime you're like near any water there's just one of those things that you can just go out in it if you want <laughs> that's Pad- interesting pad uh it's uh patrick campbell paticus on twitter uh sold profit well to paddle hq there you go uh does he tweet still is the question april 25 oh wait that was a repost i uh, tweeted on march 12th but that's about the pace that's yeah. like a few weeks ago like a tweet every few weeks if i sold for 100 million that's probably where i'd be at maybe See, i'm gonna go the other way oh really you're just yeah, gonna tweet yeah. constantly you'll have nothing else to do well one i have nothing <laughs> else to do and i'll have like infinite i'll have like no reason to like be like well maybe i'm wrong <laughs> You know, oh, yeah. I can be you like, know you're right now. Well, just you, look at yeah. my hundred million. So, well, how much? Yeah, how much? So, okay. Here's a question for you. It's not well formed. None of my questions will be worth well formed today. Uh, how much do you think? Like, you're doing the right things right now, and there is a percentage chance it turns into a huge exit, or you get unlucky, and it doesn't. Or you make mistakes and it doesn't. What do you think the breakdown is of your outcomes? Like, I guess what I'm getting at is if there were five DAXs. Oh, God help us all. If there were five <laughs> DAXs, <laughs> we would all feel so bad about ourselves. But if there were five DAXs and they were all doing exactly what you're doing right now, would you feel like you made the right call if one of those ended up with a $100 million exit uh, or they just got lucky? Like, do you feel like at this point you're doing everything you can, you guys as a group, and it's really going to come down to luck? And not, I mean, like, as long as you continue to not screw up, this is a terrible question. There's so many qualifiers. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we're most likely not going to succeed. And if we, at this point, if we do, I don't think it's luck. I feel like we're, there's like maybe like a lot of historical luck that like got us to a point where we even like met each other and started doing this stuff and all the things that <laughs> yeah, go into yeah. that. But like from this point forward, I don't know. I feel like if we don't succeed, it's just cause the idea, it's really just that the idea didn't make sense. I think that's, it's okay, actually yeah. that pure at this point. Like, I Let think, me, go ahead. I think I need to frame it differently. Yeah. Uh, so maybe it's just that like with your continued excellence and navigating the right paths and doing the right things, <laughs> And just being good at what you are doing, like the three of you. Uh, I would guess that with all of that combined, you can ensure some kind of success. You're going to make it in some way. Well, maybe you can't ensure it, but I'd say like, I bet on, I would bet on you guys making it somewhere. But the difference in like a soft landing somewhere because somebody needed to scoop you up because it wasn't going to work out financially and like a $500 million exit, that's the part that feels like luck to me. It's like, the numbers, it's all the, the external forces you can't predict, market timing, uh, the people, the strategic uh, people that would end up scooping you up and what's going on for them. It just feels like there's so much in terms of the size of the exit that is just like literal luck and you have no control over it. Do yeah, you that, agree with that? I, I would definitely say there's an aspect to that, especially in the past couple of years, you see these big acquisitions where you're just like, in hindsight like did that make any sense also by the way most MA fails like most acquisitions mm. like do not yeah like, it's not looked at in hindsight as like this this made sense yep so that's also there but i think again it just depends on your company depends on what you're doing i think for us it actually feels a little bit different uh i feel like we constantly have options to make decisions that would get us a medium oh, or like I decent see. thing yeah and it oftentimes feels like we're very explicitly not taking those. Because you know um, the barbell theory. You've read Talib. <laughs> you're like, I'm not going in the middle. We're going up <laughs> to the end, the big end. Yeah, I feel like we're all aligned in that. We're like, I don't know, we're, we just, we'd rather go all or nothing type of thing in a lot of cases. Like, if yeah. you look at where we are right now, you know, we have thousands of real companies using our stuff we could probably spin up like one of the most successful consulting businesses in in Mm. this space just because yeah we have that pool of people um like service based like we can offer our services and like you know probably make a 
like more money than any of us really would need. Yeah. Uh, and that option is there and it's always there and it continues to be there. It continues to grow and get more and more attractive. But like, I don't think any of us are like even a little interested in that. It's not tempted at all. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like that. So that's like an explicit decision, right? Like we're like choosing. So it feels like it is a kind of in our control. Yeah. Um, I get so, here's, yeah. Sorry, here's my actual question. This is where it was born out of. If your company, let's say SSD died or had a, mm -hmm. what you'd call a, a low end outcome mm -hmm. versus big made it moment, huge, whether it's an acquisition or just financial, like you guys make so much money, it doesn't matter anymore. Uh, you have like on the other extreme, amazing outcome. Do you actually feel like you were smarter that like, would you feel smarter if you had the big outcome? Like you actually did the right things. It's funny though. Cause like, I would say yes, but not in like, oh, I did like a hundred right things or like navigated every step. Right. It just feels mm -hmm. like the initial bet we made was right. It's kind of, it just feels that yeah, binary okay. and that simple. It's kind of like, it's like trading a stock, right? You like, let's say you buy an option and you're like, okay, I bet that this stock will go up over a thousand dollars in six months. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to do anything in those six months and whether you were right or not is a good binary thing. So it kind of feels that way. Like if we're right about our model of the world, we will yeah. be successful. If we're not successful, it's just cause we were wrong about it. And mm -hmm. I, I think, uh, I think what it comes down to is earlier in my career, I wouldn't have said that cause there was like a ton of execution risk. Like I could have had the right idea. I've had the right idea a bunch of times and I just like executed it poorly. Yeah. That's usually why it failed. Um, but I think we're all at a point now where it's like, that's not why we're going to fail. It's not going to be like, we weren't smart enough or we did the wrong things. It just comes down to like the correctness of the original idea. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think, I think the reason I'm asking. Ooh, that throat it doesn't feel good. <clears throat> I think the reason I'm asking is I have had some very near miss acquisitions mm -hmm. and well, one in particular like, I know, like, it's not a done deal unless it's a done deal. I know all the, the tropes about acquisitions and, like, well, how do you know you were even really close? We were really close, like, really close to an acquisition that would have been life-changing money. It's a big tech company, so it would have been, like, cool to be a founding engineer that sold his company to X. Not X, sorry. <laughs> that was, like, like a fake a fake company. I'm not saying the name of the company. Uh so like I definitely had those moment weeks where I just I thought that was my life now like we just had this huge uh outcome and things will never be the same. And then it fell through like at the final hour. And then everything has changed since. It's like that is not my life. I mean, I'm doing okay, but like there was a completely different world in front of me that I thought was where we were headed and then it was taken away. And it's like, at the end of the day, I don't feel different. I don't feel like I'm smarter or dumber because that fell through in the way that it fell through. It just feels like uh, we got really close, but and like, in my mind, what we've done is worth that because we got so close. It just didn't happen for reasons. And I guess that's where I detach like my abilities and smartness from like the outcomes, mm. I guess maybe that's just an excuse. I don't know. Maybe I'm just no, like, I, th I think the difference, I think the difference here is actually pretty straightforward. It's that you were already a product market fit. So for me, if you look at the way I describe everything, we're not there. Uh, so for me, my obsession is still whether it's very simple It's binary. Like, does this make sense or yeah. not? You got past the point where you were like, this thing definitely makes sense and it's working. Yeah, and then yeah. there I can see how it's like, now you're just looking at the range of outcomes and it kind of seems random what happens. Yeah. Okay. Um, so it was product market fit. I'm glad that you brought us back to product market fit after I said, <laughs> I hate when people talk about product market fit. And then it's you a real thing. It. Like you said, <laughs> it is a thing. I don't yeah. know why it bothers me. It's, I think it's just the, the group of people I've heard talk about it the most. No, of course it's, it's, it's any you know business I mean? term just gets like someone learns it one day and they're like, this is going to make me sound smarter. And they just shove it. Yeah, exactly. Into everything. Uh, -huh. yeah. uh, but yeah, so it's, so that's one aspect. The other aspect I think is, and again, I'm just making stuff up and it's totally possible. I'll feel different. 
it's hard for me not to feel like any acquisition, even a big one, like there's some negative feeling with that for me. Uh, mm. cause like it feels like a failure in a way. Really? Wait. So like the pot, the only real, like when you guys keep going for big, what is that big outcome? Like I want to like build something company? where, yeah, like that's, that's the goal. Yeah. And I mean, I it's not like that's never happened in the dev tool space. Like there's plenty <laughs> of examples. Yeah. So it's like, it's just, I don't think about that. I think I'm just such a, cause I'm on a very different end of the product spectrum. I think about acquisition as like the ultimate, that's where you end up, but yeah. But so then what do you do after that? I don't know. Play golf. I don't know. <laughs> 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 yeah so say I, I might be a different phase of my life and i might like think differently but just mm. in this moment if you're if today we got like an amazing acquisition offer and that would make me wealthier than i ever need to be mm -hmm. i would probably take it but then a part of me would be like well it like didn't work out uh and now i, I gotta go bet on a new thing which i'm sure i'll be excited and happy to do and like like we've talked about but like you see how there's like some negative like yeah aspect to no, that whole you, thing like that you your idea me. and your vision didn't materialize i want to have a public company you sold me i feel <laughs> robust this is like <laughs> you've really changed something in my brain like i'm viewing yeah. acquisitions differently now like that's and, the easy that's the loser's way out <laughs> Yeah, because like you like ran out of steam, so it's yeah, it's uh, and it's I think it's less about IPO and more about like you have a vision for what the ultimate version of everything you're doing could end up at. Yeah, and acquisitions end before you hit that, so that's a yeah. negative feeling for me. It's like all the the dreams that I had are not going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to find out their rights. I'm not going to yeah. like get to do all of that. And like, of course, when you get acquired, you get to still work on that stuff, but. It's, you know, yeah, never, what, never the same. Are, are there some good examples of like acquisition that was great, that went well? Instagram for acquire? is like the classic okay, yeah. one. That's a good one. Yeah. But like, good I don't call. even think the Instagram founders are really, how involved were they in that process? Like, I feel like it was great for Facebook, but I don't know if. Yeah. I was talking just from that perspective, like from the oh, yeah. acquirer's perspective. Oh, yeah. There's always some amazing examples. Founders, like it that. mostly works out. I mean, sometimes it doesn't, I guess. There was that the story WhatsApp that... one's another example where uh, amazing for Facebook, crazy, crazy exit, like massive, like what was it, like 20 billion, 19 like, billion, something insane. Was, yeah, it was like 17 people on the team or something. It, it wasn't tiny... that small, but it was very it was small. small for, right? for the acquisition size, yeah. Maybe it was like, it, I think, I think 50 of to Instagram? 60. Was Instagram, Instagram was like 12 or 13 or something. Okay, maybe yeah. that's what I'm thinking of. But WhatsApp was just massive. And then the, the founder literally like left being like, fuck this, left like, some crazy amount of money on that table. I think it was like huh. six, 700 million or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and then gave $50 million to signal to be like, here, I'm going to fund you for life. And you guys, Interesting. Just, you know, continue with know my that. vision for what I think communication should be about. So yeah, like, yeah, obviously the money is huge and you can't discount that, but you see how there's like something yeah. in your so heart that is missed. Yeah. 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 No, I get it. Uh, I'm still stuck on the uh, outcomes for the companies that acquire. So Facebook, good at acquisitions. Yeah, they're uh, good at acquisitions. Also Disney. Like they bought some IP in their day. Oh, yeah. With Star Wars. Lucas. Yeah, yeah. Marvel. That's worked out pretty well for them, I think. Interesting. ESPN, yeah. maybe not working out so well. I don't know. What are they? Weren't they acquired? Oh, the ESPN was acquired by Disney. Yeah. I mean, ABC, which owned espn i don't what know how does, does everything just does disney just own it it's kind of it's so crazy to disney me that disney's own. not like every time i find out about how their fingers are in literally everything <laughs> i'm like how are they not like worth 10 times as much as they are like they just control all entertainment <laughs> like yeah all entertainment. No, it's true oh just like every store every little gas station in the ozarks you go in there's like disney coloring books like it's amazing how their merchandise has, merchandising like, yeah it's filled every nook and cranny in this country and the world uh yeah. but the espn thing is interesting like i don't know if you follow any of the i don't know anything rights. about it tell me oh okay well like uh so sports rights like tv deals are enormous right and like these leagues just keep getting to demand higher contracts for 
live TV rights for their sports stuff. So then they start like the NFL starts spreading it around. They like get Amazon to buy one game a week and, mm-hmm. and all these companies bid against each other and they've just driven up rates. Well, at one point in the peak when ESPN had a hundred million subscribers because of the cable bundle, like everyone had ESPN in America, whether you watch ESPN or not. And it was like most channels. I know some weird stuff that I don't know why I know this. Well, I know why I know, but uh, I'm just realizing this is not common knowledge. Uh, most channels in the cable bundle, they're getting like 11 cents per subscriber. And mm. ESPN was getting over $10 a subscriber. It was some wow. insane number. So they had this crazy, crazy revenue where they had a hundred million subscriber base at the peak. And every, like basically the cable bundle was subsidizing sports right deals going to the moon and they were spending enormous amounts of money for very long-term contracts on deals mm. with the nba nfl and now things changed I, I don't know exactly today like where things are at uh but there was a period there in the middle where it was like is disney gonna have to offload espn like it, it's just gonna kill disney because they're like the big cash cow of disney they brought in so much money and then they spent so much money and it's like how are they ever gonna get out of that like as the the cable bundle fell apart and people had to go to direct to streaming like it takes a while to build that business and espn uh couldn't really work those rights out like they couldn't do direct streaming okay i'm getting into way too detailed uh synopsis here why are we talking about espn what happened no i'm sorry i just, I, I I just, just wanted to hear it. I just I don't I don't know how we got we were talking about Disney should just be giant and then oh yeah yeah you were like ESPN's not doing well for them yeah sometimes giant companies you know they get into trouble they make one too many moves yeah the sports rights thing is crazy so like like tech companies get the are like buying rights too now right yeah. I think I heard about that yeah because they all have infinite money yeah <laughs> I mean th- this is a classic thing where it's not exactly this but have you heard of I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but something like Baumol's cost disease. No. So there, there's this thing that can happen where if one industry experiences crazy productivity gains, like example, in this case, a tech industry, they force increase costs on completely unrelated industries that have maybe don't even have the ability to like, like they yeah. haven't experienced the same gains. Just think yeah. about like a, like a worker when there was so much money to be made in tech, a bunch of workers started to like shift into tech. And if you want to now have those same people and you're not in the tech industry, but you need those people, you now have to pay more all of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. So it can like ruin other industries just because one is doing well and they're like completely unrelated otherwise. So it's kind of like what's happening here where the tech companies have so much money. So now the traditional players have to like meet that bar, but they don't yeah. have the same type of business that can deliver yeah. that amount of money. Like how does any business compete with Apple? If Apple's like, like yeah. that, if, if the NFL deal expires and Apple's like, yeah, we'll just pay like double whatever anybody else would pay. Like nobody can compete with their cash. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, and why not just own like all NFL TV? Like, why not just be like, it's Apple now watch football. Enjoy. And you can only watch on <laughs> Apple devices. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, only it only is in America anyway, so it's not going to hurt the Android crowd internationally. Nobody cares about football, not this football. I feel like Apple users don't care about football. <laughs> no, they don't. That's a terrible overlap. But I'm just saying, like, they have so much money. It's like, yeah, I don't no, know. it's true. Yeah, how do you compete they can enter with anything. your traditional media company? And yeah, yeah, we'll see what happens. I think we're like entering the beginning of an era where we're really going to like understand what happens in these cases because i think these companies are now finally looking to really expand into places that are like weirdly it seems unrelated like of course they always have like a point of entry into it but like 10 years ago if you're like apple is gonna be buy like the nfl rights you're just like what the fuck that makes no sense but <laughs> yeah. we're at the place where that kind of thing is starting to happen now yeah um, i mean twitter bought some games amazon prime like Twitter? NFL on Amazon Prime. Yeah, Twitter air lot. Oh, is this what everyone's complaining about with the No, that was Peacock, which makes oh, a little Peacock, more sense because yeah. that's like NBC. So it's like a traditional media company. But yeah, people were upset because you had to subscribe to Peacock to watch this one playoff game that was a huge playoff game. <laughs> I mean the NFL playoffs are they're all the games are big. And <sighs> they got a ton of subscribers. And I'm sure those people all canceled their accounts after. This is it's, this is such a fascinating thing because uh this, I feel like this always happens where 
we were all annoyed with cable because we were like, I don't want to, I don't care about these like 90 channels. I only watch 10 and yeah. we're like, just give me like an on-demand <laughs> service. And then like, yeah. something like Netflix came out. We're like, Oh cool. Netflix. I'm going to play yeah. for Netflix. And I kind of get this. Then another thing came out. Then another thing came out. Then yeah. another thing we're came out. We're rebundling. We unbundled. Now we're bundling and it, it back But it's up. worse because like now you're crazy fragmented. Like the UX yeah. experience of it is terrible because you're like juggling multiple apps and like logging yeah. into different so things. So everybody's and... like, I wish I had one service that bundled all these different streaming services into one. Like cable. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbundling and rebundling thing. But this, I feel like this always happens where this thing with, it's happening with LLMs now where like, you know, there's chat GPT and it worked well. But then now there's this other one that like is better in some cases. So you're like, maybe I should use that one. But then sometimes yeah. it's worse. So then you have to switch back to the other one. So it's just like, yeah, you can always bet on. And I'm, I'm like obsessed with this concept ever since like, it crossed my mind where this like, I think we talked about it where I'm like, we always imagine the future to be neater, but it's actually usually more chaotic than it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah this things always end up more messy. It's just like it's kind it's of a guarantee. It's like yeah, a entropy, law of exactly. the universe. Yeah. I, it's funny because I, I I had that thought, but I didn't know if you knew what entropy was, so I didn't. Oh, it out. ouch! <laughs> I will say I was pretty proud of myself when I came up with that word. It I could popped see. in my head, and I was like, I, I "Entropy." Could <laughs> I could see the pride in your face. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that's so funny. That you didn't use that word. Oh, how many words do you not use that you come down just to talk to me? That's well, funny. Okay, yeah, but I yeah okay. It's, it's not just you. I was also like, do I need to make this metaphor again? Like, do I need to say entropy again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going gotcha. to avoid it this time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's like, it's like guaranteed. Oh, and also speaking of the LM thing, there's another thing I wanted to talk about where I'm constantly seeing these tweets where they're like, I think you're, you may be experiencing this too, because you're, you're using some of these tools, but people are like, wow, Claude, Opus, whatever mm -hmm. is so much better than chat GPT. Like Here's I'm going to use it. Huh? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about these aggregator people who are like, here's 10 of the best. Oh, examples. no. Yeah. Well, like Sora is blowing everyone's mind. <laughs> yeah. Here's the 10 best examples. Well, that, that, like a that, that's like a million of those tweets. That's a different thing. But then people are like, oh, like I'm, I'm just using Claude for everything and they're using it with the API. Oh, it's cheaper and it like gives me better results. But this stuff is so noisy right now where yeah. when ChatGPT came out, it was good, but they're clearly like messing with the cost to them performance spectrum and they've like yeah. made it worse claude just came out so they're like trying to show off how good they are there's no guarantee that they're not going to like make it worse over time yeah the price we're paying for these things are totally made up like we don't know if they're subsidized yeah. we don't know like what the uh -huh. rationale for it is so it's impossible to tell right now like if i'm going to build a business that uses this feature it's it's like there's like no stability like is a feature going to no. get worse over time is it going to get 10x more expensive over time does that break yeah. my usage of it it's just so hard to tell yeah, anything it's, it's so hard to evaluate is are the outputs actually good because yeah. you can like spot check you can just do like arbitrary tests but like across the whole point of these things is to take like very general input and mm -hmm. then do something very specific with that but like you can't test all the inputs so like most people who say oh this model's better than that model at this type of thing. You haven't tested that much. You don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, there's very little actual data around. I mean, there's these benchmarks, and that's I think interesting yeah. to talk but, about. But they're they're like the public <clears throat> versions of the model. They're like tweaking the hardware behind it all the time. Oh, right, they're tweaking yeah. like so. Then it's like it's good this week, but then two weeks from now it could be worse. Like I don't know. Yeah. 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 It's, it's all very interesting. It does. It does make me wonder for AWS because they are usually very precise with their pricing where they're like, mm. this is what it costs. Yeah. I don't remember them ever raising prices. Uh, they usually bring prices down. Yep. But with something so undefined like this, like whatever they're charging for bedrock, like, can you rely on that? Cause they, can historically, they, know they won't have to raise. Yeah. Yeah. It seems really difficult. in like this crazy flurry of trying to get these products out. Yeah, like the the Claude models, the Anthropic stuff. Is that not open source? I thought no. they were like so. Bedrock can have like proprietary models. Too. They have a deal with just, Anthropic, yeah. Oh, so why don't they have OpenAI stuff? They just haven't done a deal. Azure has that deal. Oh, okay. I think so, it's a good setup for these companies. It's like just work on 
making them models and then Amazon yeah. will work on distributing them, Azure will work on distributing them. So is that the Makes only sense. way Claude is distributed? How, how do people use Claude? When they people have a direct API. Uh, okay. But obviously it's better when it's embedded in, in a cloud provider. Um, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't even have the direct API, I think. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's, use and stuff, but, there's yeah. some, some nerds on Twitter that won't be able to use your thing anymore, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, I see, I saw a post where someone was like, I switched from Ch open AI to chat GBT and my cost went down 30%. I'm like, yeah. How long is that going to last? I don't know. <laughs> is it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, these things tend to be very easily swappable, so it's not a big deal, but, uh, yeah, I'm having a tough time like modeling any kind of cost or anything with it. Mm -hmm. Difficult. Yeah, it's a big black box right now. Yeah. But there's a lot of growing optimism around this big black box <laughs> taking us to the promised land. <laughs> I don't know about the robots, though. Every time somebody shows one of these videos of a robot like mm -hmm. running around in the jungle, let's stop making so many robots because this is how they're going to get us. If we're worried about <laughs> AI safety... Maybe stop, cool it on the robots. Like, let's figure out the, the software part first. And then, then let's give it a body. But there's so many of them now. People are all really trying to get the robots out there. See it's, how this ends. It's wild to me how difficult the robotic stuff is. Because I feel like we've been seeing robotics demos for, like, as long as I can remember. Oh, yeah. And they definitely get better. But I'm like, they still... <laughs> like can't do shit you know yeah <laughs> yeah um, and it's like damn this is a very hard problem and i think they're adding in the ai stuff now which makes it like quote unquote like learn and, and understand things in a dynamic way but that's not what i'm talking about i'm actually just talking about like its physical capabilities and how it moves and the fluidity of the movement it's just like wow they suck still compared yeah. to like to muscles and bones turns out are pretty good at moving around in space and joints like yeah yeah it's a hard thing it's a hard thing yeah. to mimic with metal and silicon and whatever else huh yeah so i think i think realistically we're probably just gonna have clones that we enslave what Where did, <laughs> how did we get here <laughs> Well, if that's, you can't get there with joke. muscles, if you can't get there with metal, like the only option. You think is, we're gonna you know, clone? Wait, hey, hey, walk no, me I'm just through kidding. This. You think? Okay, I was just kidding, but you know, okay, definitely like a sci-fi concept that comes up. Well, yeah, I need to understand what is the concept. Like we would, you would clone yourself, and that becomes a baby that thirty-one years from now will be like you. What are you doing with that clone? I'm taking its organs for myself. When, thirty years from now? Oh, yeah. I see. Because you're old now. It's going to be a little blood boy. Young or... Ew. <laughs> that's creepy. That's like a sci-fi thing. I feel like this is, a, this is like a sci-fi concept that comes up all the time. Interesting. I don't think I've yeah. seen any movies like that. By the way, don't watch uh, Outlaws. It's what like the hell is happy... Outlaws? It's, an, it's like on Netflix. It's a happy Madison movie. Oh, why do people like Adam Sandler movies? His sense of humor is so stupid. Yeah, I'm I sorry. Know. It's just like so over the top and like... I don't know. I always thought I liked Adam Sandler, but you watch a movie and you're like, yeah, this is totally what Adam Sandler would think is funny, but it's not funny. No, but it's... he's got a weird spectrum of stuff. So I think he he has like really stupid stuff. He has slightly stupid stuff. He has stuff that's like really weird and really good. Uh, what was the A24 movie? So there yeah, was yeah. a serious movie he did, wasn't there? There's a, there's a, no, there's a bunch of good movies oh, that really? he's done. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but I think his older comedies are good. Like it might be nostalgia, but like Happy Gilmore and like all the stuff that happened. But they're so over the top, <laughs> and uh, this one is like a modern movie. And when you see the over top this in a modern comedy, I so easily. It just was too much. It was just stupid. My wife and I just looked at each other for an hour and a half. Like what? What are we watching? Why do we do this? Okay, there was a movie called Uncut Gems. Have you seen it? No. Okay, Adam Adam Sandler is a main character, and this is like one of the most stressful movies you will ever watch in your whole life, because Ooh, he's this guy sounds... that owns a jewelry store, or something like that. A really weird character, and he's a degenerate gambler. And the whole movie is this fast paced thing of him like getting into these scenarios where he's literally gonna die because he's like gambled too much and someone's gonna kill him. Like eking out a way to like gamble again and like getting back to even, 
then doing it again just over and oh. over and over and over and over no. and just like it's like this like crazy like build up of just stress and how the hell can people live like this oh i do not want to be stressed when i'm watching it was a great a movie. movie it was a good movie you should watch just, it i just don't i want to i want to just enjoy myself <laughs> i like being like i think i do like movies that make me like uh confused like i think i like the ones <laughs> i think i like the ones where at the end i'm like i don't even know what just happened because I, I seem to be drawn to them like inception Uncle movies that you feel like you like have that. to watch a lot hmm. well you watched sinker taylor soldier spy you said and that is yeah, the did, epitome yeah. of that <laughs> yeah it was a lot of that like, i don't know what happened but i like how i'm feeling right now <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's in the heart not the head yeah all right, I've, I've got to blow my nose so bad. I can't talk on a mic any longer today. This is, I feel awful. So, okay. I'm sorry. We feel should better. Yeah, I'm going to try. Uh, I'm coming. Wait, no, I'm not. I've got so many different weird things going on. Uh, so I keep thinking the thing I'm doing next is like next week, but it's That's actually. A week for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm coming to Miami. I can't wait. It's going to be so did fun. Did you book your flight? You did, right? I booked my flight. Uh, I don't have a hotel for the extracurricular activities yet. I probably will get one because, I don't know, sounds like a lot. But I just feel like I'm going to miss out on like the camping experience. No, like, no. We'll, we'll, we'll all just hang out together. And then I'll just go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. I'll go back to my hotel. Okay. Yeah. I There's going to be some people sleeping at Dax's house. And I kind of want to like... I don't know, roast marshmallows and like tell spooky stories. But I feel like it's funny because I feel like everyone is adult AF. So everyone is just going to want to go to sleep at 11. So, yeah, it's probably or like true. even earlier. 11? You think I'm staying until 11? Okay, I'm getting a hotel for sure. <laughs> so, you guys are talking about going to bed by 11. No. I'll, I'll send you some places by me. It'll be like a 10 yeah, minute walk, get, which will be I'd nice. Different, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like somewhere really close. Yeah. And then um, React Miami. Good times. Everybody's coming to Miami. It's going to be fun. Yeah. We started planning our party or like Liz started planning because she's very good at that stuff. And she sent a huge list uh, mm. of things that we need to do. But it's going to be fun. And we're going to try to figure out like we might have like a food truck or something similar. Oh, cool. Yeah. Look at you guys. We're going to have it decorations. So official. Decorations. Yeah. Ooh, like balloons. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what. We're just, just going to make it feel like over the top you're in Miami, Florida. Love it. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go blow my nose. Okay. And Enjoy that. Pee. If there's yeah, blood, to... go Ew. to the hospital. No. <laughs> Wait, really? If there's ever blood in, in your stomach? No, okay. no, no, no. My nose bleeds all the time. <laughs> okay. When I think too See hard. It. See it, X. When you think too hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>